Welcome to episode two of the high school sport truck. Last time we ran into a little problem. This time we figure out how to resolve it. And I discover that I'm an idiot. As you can see here, the problem is this wheel is not contacting the tip of the valve like we talked about previously. Um, but with the new setup with the comp cams retainers and the uh, and the keeper, we've got all the clearance that we need, all the clearance in the world for our self-aligning uh, rocker arms. So um, that's the problem. That's been the issue. Plus, you see how much more compressed this spring is than this one. This is actually still taller than it's supposed to be, um, meaning it doesn't have quite as much seat pressure. It's not the end of the world. We're close. We're only within 30 thou. So I'm not worried about it for a street application. Uh, this thing's not going to run. Uh, you know, this might spin to 6,000 RPM. It's not like it's really going to zip out there. The cam runs out at about 5,500. Uh, we'll be lucky if the heads will go that far. So um, I'm really not worried about it. Uh, that's that's kind of the least of our issues in this. Plus, we just have like stock replacement valves. Um, so the valves aren't super stout. So we really don't want to just beat them into the seats um, we'll, you know, any harder than we just absolutely have to. So. But we're looking pretty good. Um, I have run the wear pattern. Uh, our push rod length is really close. Uh, it should be, should be plenty. Um, we're hitting right in the center of the valve. Um, you can see the wear pattern here specifically, how it's dead center. So that's right where we want it. We don't have a ton of lift in this cam. The intakes are 500. The uh, exhausts are 510. So not, not a big cam. So uh, I think it's 213 duration on the intake and 220 on the exhaust. So not a huge. Not a huge lumpy cam, uh, should have a little bit of bump to it. But, um, you know, for a street truck, I think it's gonna be great. All right, so we got two issues. Um, first off, our illustrious engine builder decided that, uh, I don't know how they did it, but somehow they cross-threaded and screwed up an ARP stud. And of course, they're some oddball, can't ever find them application, but thankfully, Summit Racing had a pair for $10, $11, something like that. Uh, so we are overnighting those because our local Summit did not have them here in Texas. Uh, they're coming out of, you know, Georgia or whatever. Second problem. That was straight and uh, it's not anymore. So uh, this is starting to actually become an issue. Um, that was 90 degrees when we started. Uh, right about the time it pushes the spring down enough to be able to actually Put the keepers off and on in our arrangement which is not that stout as we've discussed uh this thing starts bending so um i have to get my weld on if it would have made it made it through the rest of the procedure i probably would have just uh 
taken it back and uh, gotten another one. But uh, it didn't make it. So let me get a pry bar. that we get this back to where we were uh, but the thing is we know it's not right so we're gonna we're gonna fix it you gotta get the galvanizing off Shout out to uh, Multi Tool. They didn't pay me for this. I paid my own money for this. I got it from Trick Tools. Um, I've had this on this cheap grinder for probably two years now. And uh, if you don't have one of these, man, I'm telling you, you are missing out. It is absolutely one of the handiest things you'll have in the shop. I don't even use a regular grinder anymore. Just use that. that just happen to have a little eighth inch here wipe that off okay it's ugly but whatever impromptu making it happen Needs to be a little thinner. Let's grind that down a little more. See how it works. Oh. Duh.
Oh, much better. I don't have to fight this near as much. You know what? That one's bent. From our tool being messed up. I can see it. That's a good thing we ordered two. I'll torque that in here a second. Great. That was the last one I was working on before I fixed the tool. It's just always stupid stuff. It never fails. God, that pisses me off. Let's try this. Go the other way with it. Let's push it instead of pull it. Let's try that way. See what that does for me. This pisses me off not having the right stuff. But I can't afford to buy everything. You just shouldn't have to buy everything. Hmm. Wow, that worked surprisingly a lot easier. What do you know? What if I wouldn't have bent the tool? Oh well. Live and learn, I suppose. We'll remember how to do it this way, you know, next time we do this in five years. Yeah. No, we're going to be doing this pretty soon on another Vortec project. All right, what's the plan for today? Okay, so plan for today, uh, UPS has already come and dropped off our two rocker studs that we needed. Those are torqued. I went ahead and uh, set the rockers and put new, uh, set the valve lash on those. Uh, the motor's currently sitting at top dead center, which is number one piston all the way up and aligned on the mark down there. So we're gonna be ready to stab the distributor as soon as it is time uh, to do so. The next step, um, I'm gonna wipe the China wall down on both ends, uh, break clean the, uh, the intake, and uh, we're gonna put some silicone down, and we're gonna go ahead and set the lower intake. Um, O'Reilly's is bringing us a new fuel injector. We are converting from uh, multi-port into sequential. Uh, so there's a conversion kit that takes the old spider and converts it to one with actual injectors out of the cylinders. So we're gonna need that because we're gonna make more power. So uh, we're gonna get the intake on. We're gonna set the spider. We're gonna put the upper intake on. We're going to do a little tweak on the throttle body so that we can get a little more horse ponies out of this thing. Um, and it is currently about 11.30, and I would like to say by two o'clock, we're putting the motor in the truck at the latest. So that is the plan. Let's see how it goes. Now for something completely different. Okay, so intake is on, uh, distributor is set, we're at top dead center, uh, everything's synced up the way it's supposed to go, valve lash is all set, all that. Um, on General Motors, 
small blocks specifically, older stuff, including Vortec. Uh, the distributor has an O-ring that, that maintains oil pressure, or it has a very tight fit. Some of them have an O-ring, some of them don't. Um, but it maintains a very tight fit in that bore, and the little priming tool doesn't always jive with that. So we don't get as much oil flow through the push rods as we should. Uh, so really, we should have had more oil flowing through here, in my opinion. Um, but we're waiting a few minutes on the new injector spider. Uh, it's being delivered by our parts provider. Um, what I want to do is actually make oil pressure with the starter. So the plugs are out. Um, I got the starter on, but we don't have the flywheel on here yet, or flex plate is not on here yet. Uh, so there's nothing for, starting, nothing for the starter to engage. Can't get it on with the motor on the stand. There's just not enough room to wiggle it in there. I tried for a second. Uh, so while we've got a few minutes of downtime, we're just going to raise the motor up, um, pull the engine stand off of it, put the flex plate on, and then we'll put it back on the stand uh, just for stability purposes. I don't want to, um, I don't want the thing hanging in the air while we're trying to bump it with the starter. That's silly. All right, so quick setup. I've uh, got the flex plate on. Got um, we've got a, a fresh battery for another project that we're using with jumper cables. Over to the starter. We just need a good ground, and uh, and then we got our vice grip garage Lone Wolf three thousand ready to go. So we're gonna spin it over. Um, I just want to get oil flowing up here, driven off of the distributor. bubbles. Okay. All right. Well, spin it over. We're moving a little bit. It's, uh, definitely feel like we need more flow, but it's moving some. Uh, we don't have a lot of RPM off the starter, so. Good news is we don't hear any clunking and popping and everything seems to be moving. So call that a success. Okay, so these throttle bodies, if you want to come in close here, um, they have this big blade that cuts off a good chunk of the airflow for these. Um, just taking this out is worth like over a half a second uh, on a, a 4.3 V6, either an S10 or a, or a half ton. Um, don't really know why it's there. Never really had a problem taking them out. I've done this, I don't know, probably 20 trucks. So, um, the hole here, you don't want to mess with that hole. I also don't worry about taking the rivet out uh, because that affects how much idle air comes through. The idle air control can only compensate so much. What I find is instead of worrying about these rivets and all that stuff, there's really not any performance gain on this motor there. Uh, in my previous experience, mind you, that's all from 20 years ago. Um, but same motor because this car, this truck's 20 years old. So, yeah. So what we do is basically you just cut this part off and uh, sand it down smooth and try not to mess with the, the metal part or the uh, steel part. Take the flap off and uh, makes a lot of good suction noises. <laughs> Sorry, the shop's such a mess, guys. Annoying to me too, but we gotta get this done. Let's come in. You could put this in a vise and use a hacksaw or something like that, but you know, we got this. 
Don't try this at home because you'll cut your fingers off. And then we just want to try to take the flap. Don't try to mess with the rest of it. pretty good so the final cleanup on it mm, where's my deburring tool okay so ahead. this is a deburring tool this one's from all-star relatively cheap uh, just be careful don't shove this into the palm of your hand uh, I've seen more than one person do that so it's aluminum so this stuff's pretty soft Kind of come in and just kind of whittle that away so you get a nice smooth edge. There we go. A little emery cloth. Sandpaper. Just make sure you don't have any burrs. Okay. So I guess you could take all this off, but it leaves holes there, and then your idle uh, will be all screwed up. You won't be able to overcompensate with the idle air control in order to be able to get the idle down. So essentially, just leave it alone at that point. Back when I was jacking with these, all these trucks were pretty new. So it would have been relatively expensive to go buy a new, a new throttle body. And this was a essentially free mod that we could do and gain some legit time. I mean, it was, it's noticeable. Um, Anyways, we'll give this a wipe down and a blow off and uh, put it back in. And uh, Bob's your uncle. We are just about ready to put this puppy back back in the truck. It is about that time. So, any questions, Rob? You said you were wanting to get this uh, put into the truck somewhere around two o'clock because you hit it right nail on the head two o'clock 155 yeah i mean that's kind of including waiting on parts so it's about right seems about car part for the course for this project man this thing we could little roadblock after little roadblock after little roadblock just been a bunch of stupid stuff that we shouldn't have had to deal with and and did anyways so what are you gonna do